Today we're talking about just how trash Chronos Pendant is. Pretty drastic title, huh? But it caught the attention and that's all I needed. Because there is kind of a misconception as to how Chronos Pendant should be used and when it should be built. So if you're a fan of Chronos Pendant, don't get your panties in not yet, we will talk about when and how it should be utilized as well. But what is this misconception and why does it exist? What you will often see in games still these days is people building Chronos Pendant relatively early into their build. Often as a third slot item after for example pen boots and a starter or fourth slot. Just relatively early to get that extra CDR, to get that power. And that all once made perfect sense. And this once is when Chronos Pendant wasn't changed, it wasn't in Season 4. In Season 3 and beforehand there were different stats on the item obviously throughout the times, but what we last saw most was it being a total cost of 2400 gold, 75 magical power, 25 MP5 and 20% cooldown reduction. While it once used to have a 25% cooldown reduction, the changes the item saw through most seasons were incredibly minor compared to other items and it was always a solid choice if you didn't want to stack. If you wanted to get that early safe power and cooldown reduction, you could just go for Chronos Pendant, even on gods like Scylla. And it was okay. It was often not the ideal choice, but it was never a completely bad choice either. There were times where, for example, Pythagoras' Peace would take its place a little bit in the meta, even though not too many people recognized that. But in the end, overall, Chronos Pendant was solid. Then Chronos Pendant got completely changed in Season 4, and a lot of people kinda didn't recognize this change. What did this change imply? Chronos Pendant first of all got a whole lot more expensive. It went from 2400 gold to 2900 gold. 2900 gold is at the upper end of item prices. It's where the really high tier items are, the really late game items. And it's something that is far from ideal to be built early on in the game because this extra 500 gold really matters considering how many waves it can be in a game or how much longer you have to stay in a place in the other game modes that are not conquest in order to get this extra gold. So we have a heavy extra fee on this item that wasn't there before. So far so bad, but what does that mean for the rest of the item? If it's more expensive, it should have better stats to make up for it, right? Well. Not necessarily in every single context. First of all, Chronos Pendant lost power and now has 60 power instead of 75, giving you a little less early damage if you build it. The MP5 stayed the same, so if you need it for the MP5, it's still a solid choice in that regard, but MP5 is usually not a primary stat, not a preferred stat. It's a nice bonus on the item, but it's not what you buy an item for. The cooldown reduction was also not increased directly, it is still 20%. So what are we left with? What has actually changed? The passive. It has a new passive. Every 10 seconds, the pendant activates, subtracting one second from all your abilities currently on cooldown. The initial cooldown will not start until you leave the fountain. That's pretty nice. That's a nice benefit, which means that it's actually more closer to 30 to 40% cooldown reduction, depending on how you want to see it, and depending on which time in the match you're at, and depending on which guard you're playing. So the value actually varies a little bit and you can abuse certain mechanics to get it to very high CDR values in the context of certain abilities, but realistically most of the time it's more around 10 to 20 percent. Also those abuse mechanics usually happen in the context of other items that you can't get that early on and you need to get to late game first to get them anyways. So what we have here is an item that gives you roughly up to 30 percent CDR. It has a price tag of 2900 gold. It has 60 magical power, 25 MP5. And that's it. Is that good? Maybe. Is that good for early game? Definitely not. And that's where Spear of Desolation comes in, which pretty much makes Chronos Pendant in its current state almost laughable for early game. If you look at Spear of Desolation, you'll notice a few things. First, it's 300 gold cheaper, making it more of a mid-price range item for early game. It's not a cheap early game, but it's also not a super expensive early game item. It is stronger, it has 80 power. It has 20 flat penetration, meaning all your abilities deal a lot more damage against anyone who's got a little bit of protections, which is pretty much anyone in the game. It also has 10% cooldown reduction, and it also has a 1 second cooldown reduction if you kill an enemy. Now this passive, this is nice, it's a nice bonus, but let us not talk about the passive or factor it in in any way. We're simply talking about the trade against another guard. The passive would be a nice bonus, if it happens it happens, it's nice, but it's not what you're building it for. 
we're talking about more power, flat penetration, and still enough CDR. And now let's put these items in the arena. Let's put them in a test against each other, where we put them against a Rabot on a level 10 Habois. You have Sands of Time, Pen Boots, and your third item of choice, Kronos Pendant or Spear of Desolation. And look at the damage numbers right here. We have 325 damage on Habois 1 with Kronos Pendant, and 201 damage on his 3, which is not completely maxed here. With Spear of Desolation, we have 406 damage and 259. That means the total damage for Kronos Pendant is 526, while the total damage for Spear of Desolation is 665. That is a 139 damage difference between two items where the one that deals less damage is more expensive. Now this shouldn't come as a surprise, because obviously Kronos Pendant has less power and no flat penetration. But the problem here is that there's just no justification for Kronos Pendant. All you get is a little bit of extra cooldown reduction, but what does that help you if you don't have the damage to back it up? If you look at what happens with Rabot here is, with Kronos Pendant I need a full extra ability or multiple basic attacks to kill Rabot, whereas with Spear of Desolation I simply don't even need that last ability. So who cares if my abilities come off cooldown a little bit faster if it takes me one less ability to kill the enemy in the first place. And this is pretty much literally all it comes down to. The damage on Spear of Desolation is so superior early game that there is no justification for Kronos Pendant. The only thing you could maybe reason with a little bit is getting your ultimate a little bit more often or maybe getting your escape a little bit more often, but 10% cooldown reduction plus the bonus from the passive are not that crazy, especially when the passive only works as long as you have anything on cooldown, which is not always the case either. And when that means that your ultimate, being off cooldown a little bit quicker, deals significantly less damage, then where is the benefit? Exactly, it is not there. There is no reason to build Kronos Pendant in 3rd slot as long as Spear of Desolation is as strong as it currently is. And even if that wasn't the case, there are plenty of other options for the 3rd slot that are still better than Kronos Pendant. It just doesn't have room there. Does that mean that Kronos Pendant is absolutely complete garbage? No, because there's still late game. In late game you will have a reasonable amount of penetration through various items, you will already have a reasonable amount of cooldown reduction, and you will probably have some targets where you need percentage pen anyways, where the flat pen doesn't really matter all too much. And that's where Kronos Pendant can come into play again. If you are at 20% cooldown reduction and you get Kronos Pendant on top of that, it gets you to cooldown reduction cap which is nice in the first place because you get all your abilities off faster and at that point they will deal a lot of damage. Additionally, you have the passive which gives you even more cooldown reduction, meaning you can utilize your abilities even more and at that point of the game your abilities will have a lower cooldown in the first place. Having abilities with a lower cooldown makes Kronos Pendant more effective. Why is that so? Because due to the fact that the cooldown of the ability is shorter, the one second uh, averages out as a higher percentage of the ability's cooldown. So, in the end, you gain even more CDR depending on which ability it is. If you have a Habwa 1 which already is very low on cooldown, then this one second can really mean a lot in late game. It's still an okay benefit early, but not nearly as strong as when you already have a lot of CDR on the ability in the first place through other items. I wouldn't say it's an ideal late game item, because often in late game you want at least some health on you or some sort of utility or just maximize your damage as much as possible and for all those purposes Kronos Pendant is not the greatest. But there are scenarios where you just want more cooldown reduction and for that it's just great. For example think of Janus who can really make use of all that extra cooldown reduction and for whom cooldown reduction is basically the best way of surviving more and having more impact. So for him a late game Kronos Pendant is a great, a brilliant choice. You just have to get to late game first. You want to have at least Spear of Desolation finished, you probably want to have Rod of Tahuti before and in most mages, you will probably want Obsidian Shard or Spear of the Magus on most mages, and after that, that's the time where you look for your last two slots, maybe even your last slot only, situational items that you can benefit from, and that's where Kronos Pendant still has this benefit. But don't rush Kronos Pendant. Do not build it in the third slot. The only real benefit from this item is MP5, and MP5 only means that you have bad mana management, so that's not a reason to build it, especially with Sands of Time giving you a ridiculous amount of mana. 
Maybe, maybe Assault has a bit more of a justification to build, but even then, there should be much, much better items. Even a Spear of Desolation in first slot and five mana pots should do more benefit for you than Chronos Pendant can. With that, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was insightful, I hope this was informative, and I hope you will actually apply this in your game. If you aren't subscribed yet, feel free to click that subscribe button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. See you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out!